Hey there, Wolfpack fans. It's me again, Kenzie Gibbs, bringing you another episode of Locked on Wolfpack with my main man, Grayson Boone, in the building. And let me tell y'all something. This, we are looking at a, a tough loss that our men's basketball team suffered up in Charlottesville. We're going to talk about how this happened, why this happened, and where we go from here. Does that sound like a good episode to you, Grayson? Let's get it. All righty. Well, before we get into it, I've got to tell you that this episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sport book of Locked On. Trust me, folks, you make every moment more when you visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. So just a quick reminder, we're going to get into this game against UVA, how this loss happened, why this loss happened. And again, the moments that concern us and the moments that we look at and say, hey, there's a silver lining here, because I surely do believe that there are silver linings to be had in this game. So stick around while we go through all that and more on today's episode of Locked on Wolfpack. Are Locked On Wolfpack, your daily podcast on the NC State Wolfpack, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So, Grayson, we, we're sitting here today after this game. We're recording after, of course, watching LeBron break the all-time scoring record and all that good stuff. And it's ironic that on the night that we see the all-time scoring record in the NBA broken, we have our lowest scoring game of the season in a 63-50 to loss to Virginia. What are your initial thoughts about this game? I'll tell you what, uh, I don't know if LeBron ever used his college eligibility, but we sure could have used him out in the red and white there uh, tonight. <laughs> but this game, you know, you, you and I were just talking before we hit record here. It was a tough game, but I'm not all that discouraged by it, to be quite honest with you. Um, you know, that's a that's a tough game against a super tough team. UVA is solid as basically they've ever been. Um, Absolutely. It's on the road in a tough environment. I thought, to be quite honest, I thought this game was going to get a lot worse with what we saw in the first half. Uh, first half was very sloppy from us. Just too many turnovers, too many cheap fouls, not enough balls going in the bucket. Uh, you know, just a tough showing in the first half. DJ picked up two quick fouls, and unfortunately, that was a theme for the rest of the game. Couldn't keep him on the floor for very long to make much of a difference. Uh, even when he was on the floor, though, didn't help him a whole lot when he was getting double teamed. You could easily see that was a big point of emphasis for the UVA defense, was getting two guys on DJ virtually any time he had the ball. And uh, he was a bit frazzled every single time. He had some uh, costly turnovers. Just didn't look comfortable at all tonight. And, uh, you know, UVA, they had a pretty clear defensive game plan. And uh, more or less, we let them accomplish exactly what they were trying to do. I was very confused about that flagrant foul that was called on DJ Burns. I thought that was super ticky tack. I, I, I didn't, didn't understand like because it, it, they don't they have clear path fouls in the NCAA, correct? Am I am I wrong? Yeah, here? but especially uh Terquavion had that happen to him in the first half, and there was no call there. Right, and and I'm I, that's why I was confused because I'm like that that was not a violent or egregious act that I think warrants a a um, a flagrant foul there. But this is not us saying that the refs cost us this game. This is not us saying yeah. that. I just thought that was a very peculiar call. Uh, this was not a refs cost us this game situation. I actually think that this was a game that not the players needed. I think this was a game that Coach Keats needed. I think that Coach Keats needed to see, hey, when you play teams that are really good defensively, the strategy of dump it off to DJ and guards figure it out on the fly will not work. It won't work. It's not sustainable. And so I'm not panicking. I'm not upset here. We did a lot of things that – Virginia's huge. They're long. They have length at every position except point guard where you got the little bite-sized Key Hay Clark. That, uh, Grayson, how tall are you? I'm 5'11". So I think I, I even have a couple inches on I was Key just Hay. about to say, I'm pretty sure you're taller than Key Hay Clark. So, yeah. so with that being said, I'm, I look at this situation and I say to myself, we out-rebounded that team. This team that always has at least 
a seven footer or two hanging around. We didn't do terribly in terms of turnovers, of of course, except for the ones that you were talking about with DJ Burns that were just like god awful. We need to get into some sets. And I know some people are going to look at me and say, Ken, it's too late in the season. There's nothing we can do. But I'll tell you what, the constitution of this team disagrees with that. These are ball players that are winners. And winners do what they must when they know they need to adjust. And I think that all these players know we're good at ISO ball. Jarkel, good at ISO ball. Terquavian, great at ISO ball. Sure. But the reality is ISO ball should be reserved for limited situations because ISO ball is um, fallible to your tendencies, to what you go to, to team seeing, okay, he likes to do a uh, tween, tween, hezzy, go to his left. That's his move. That's his go-to. That's where where he feels comfortable at. If I can cut that off, he's probably going to hit this spin back. It's fallible to people learning what you like, what that one player likes, as opposed to running sets in motion with multiple things going on, multiple things happening to where if you cut this off, your overplaying is setting up this counter. We need more sets. We need more. Defensively, I think this was not a bad game for us. I think that there were some bad fouls, but defensively, I don't think we were horrible. I think we had, uh, especially in the second half, Second half, especially, I think we kind of tightened down the the uh, what do they say, batting down the hatches and and did what we needed to defensively. I I'm not discouraged by this game. I am still excited. And for those who got too excited about these last three wins or four wins rather, remember most of those came against bottom feeders in the conference. So this is still a good team, winning games that they're supposed to win. But in this game, I, I'm not really walking away with my head down. Yeah, I mean, like you said, I didn't think we did a horrible job on defense. And like you also said, you know, the second half, I thought we were pretty good defensively. Uh, We forced a lot of shots that they were not comfortable taking, and they weren't hitting them. And when that was happening, we were coming down with the reboards, reboards, rebounds. We out-rebounded them uh, by a pretty decent margin. I believe it was six. I think it was 37 to 31. That's a pretty solid job against a pretty good team. Uh, But, you know, just uh, the the defensive lapses that we did have kind of felt like they compounded on top of each other, much Absolutely. of which were in the first half. You know, we when we weren't hitting our shots, we would come we'd come back down, look a little bit lazy, and then boom, another easy bucket. I thought yeah. now these two ideas kind of contradict each other, but in the first half, I thought we were both lazy and too energetic. Now again, those don't make sense together in the same sentence, but lazy in the sense that we weren't kind of paying attention to their assignments. I felt a lot of times when they were getting the easy buckets, the guy that was supposed to be on the man that scored was like completely turned the opposite direction. Yep. Now UVA is fast; they're a quick team. They will they'll make you miss. It kind of in the open field like football. They'll make you miss, and you'll pay for it when you do. Um, yep. But you know, all in all, defensively, I'd give it a I'd give it a B minus tonight. It wasn't horrible, but you know, offensively, mm, probably a D plus. Just. Just couldn't put the ball in the basket. And again, you know, I mentioned this the other day when we were talking about the Georgia Tech win. When you have guards that you rely so heavily on for for their shooting, every now and then you're going to run into a night where one of them's off, maybe the other one's off, maybe they're both off like they were in Georgia Tech. But, you know, Jarkel Joyner, he killed us tonight, to put it it very clearly. He killed us tonight. Um, Just couldn't, couldn't find any sort of rhythm. He did kind of distribute the ball as the game went on, which that was good to see. You know, he didn't, you know, crawl into a turtle shell and basically give up. But, you know, I I think he finished like two of 12. Two of 14. Two of 14. Okay, great. Even worse. Uh, (laughs) Just not going to get it done. Not going to get get it done against the UVA team. You know, UVA, the only really chance, real chance you have to beat a UVA team is with quick guards that can get into open space and knock down the open shots when they get them. Tonight just didn't happen. Outside of Casey Morsell, uh, who I'm sure his back is a little sore from what we saw there in the second half. Um, You know, he he tried his very hardest to will us back into that game. We cut it all the way back down to nine points, uh, and I stood up off the couch instead of sitting down. I thought we were going to make a run there, but just not enough firepower tonight. You know, and against the UVA team, a lot of times it's hard to gather up enough firepower, but 
it is what it is. You know what? I'm, I'm going to tell you the next reason or my final reason of why I think that this is a game Coach Keats needed in just a second. But before I do, I've got to tell you all about FanDuel. Trust me, folks, this year, the only app you need at your Super Bowl party is FanDuel, America's number one sports book. We're really excited about our new betting partner for Locked On because they're the number one sports book in America. Again, if you're new to FanDuel, that's even better. They have so many great features that make betting on sports fun and easy. Download FanDuel now so you can get your bet Super Bowl, so you can bet your uh, Super Bowl 57 bets with a first, with a no sweat first bet where you'll get up to $3,000 back in bonus bets in your if your first bet doesn't win. FanDuel lets you bet on everything from the money line, the point spreads, to who will score a touchdown. The FanDuel Sports app is safe, secure, and super easy to use. Best of all, you'll get paid your winnings instantly. So join FanDuel today at FanDuel.com slash locked on to claim your no sweat first bet on Super Bowl 57. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sports book of the NFL. Now, the last thing I'll say is this. This was a game that Coach Keats needed as well to me because Virginia did a great job of, and this may have been why we beat them on the boards. They were hell-bent on stopping our transition game. We're one of the best teams in the nation in transition. And Virginia Tech, I'm sorry, Virginia said, well, now wait a minute. If they're one of the best in the nation and they they get all these points before you can get set up, well, well, let's see how well they do against us set up all game. And they did, they very much so said, we'll let them have the rebounds. But when it comes to getting back, when it comes to not getting uh beat here, we'll 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 see if they can beat us in the half court and we'll give them all the rebounds they want. So I think that Coach Keats needed to see that because he needed to see, okay. What adjustments do I make if a team is is determined to say, hey, we'll let them have their uh, their fast break, but we're going to give up the board. What adjustments do you make? Because, again, the fast break style of basketball is very similar and very much so in the vein of I've got really good guards. I'll let them figure it out. Well, guess what? When they decide we don't want to crash the boards, we want to get back, that's what happens. So with that being said, those are the the things that I initially thought. And, um, you know, again, this isn't a game that I, I feel like the, the ceiling is falling and we're a terrible team or anything like that. I still think we're a good team. I don't know if we'll be ranked in the top 25 next week, but I still think we're a good team. I still think that this is a team that has the potential to do some really good things come ACC and NCAA tournament time. Um, but with that being said, this is a tough result that you never want to see. So you you kind of got to live with that. Any final thoughts on this game, Grayson? Yeah, there were probably three things I would have liked to see a lot more of in this game. You know, I talked a little bit about DJ getting double teamed basically every single time he touched the ball. Felt like we l- left a lot on the table, not kind of cutting to the hoop with our other players. Uh, you know, if they're going to double team DJ, that leaves a gaping hole in the key there. Somebody's got to cut and make a move. Uh, felt like just... A lot of standing around, um, not pointing fingers, but a lot of that was from Traquavion. He felt like if you if you want a guy to cut to the hoop, that's probably who's needing to be doing it. Um, didn't happen. Uh, also tonight, we were very bad in the paint. I believe they outscored us 32 to 12. Uh, yeah. 12 is a season low for us in the paint. That's never going to get it done. Uh, you know, especially, and again, especially against a team like UVA. And you also mentioned transition. I believe our fast break points tonight were – Two, two, just two, which is also a season low. Um, you know, there were there were a lot of missed layups tonight, missed a lot of bunnies that really could have made a, a heck of a lot of difference. You know, we only lost by 13. It felt like we lost by a lot more than that. But, you know, a couple shots here down the stretch, a couple more shots in the first half, we would have been right there in it, I think. Um, and then, of course, Rounding this out, I would have le- I would have liked to see more Ernest Ross tonight. Um, you know, he was in there in the first first half. I thought he had a very bad foul called against him. I thought he had a clean block, but that's re- not really neither here nor there. Um, LJ Thomas, where was LJ Thomas tonight? Now, I don't think he was going to come in and rain seven threes on him, but 
at least mix it up or something. You know, when you're getting virtually, uh, you know, negative from. I was just about to say, but two of fourteen is a net negative. I mean, yeah, let's just when call it. When you're getting spade. absolutely nothing from Jarkel Joiner, you can't. You don't really have the you know the leeway to just ride him out there. No, um, yeah. I mean, despite Jarkel's struggles here, uh, not just tonight, but also Saturday against Georgia Tech. Don't write him off by any means. I think uh, he will. He'll have. He'll get his lick back, uh, as the kids say these days. I think he'll. He'll probably take his game up to Boston College and he'll be just fine. But you know, just a rough couple of games for Jarkel. Um, but you know, when he's having a, a rough game like that, I think you need to see someone like an LJ Thomas come in and give us a fresh, fresh look some way or another. So uh, that, you know, that was a bit frustrating tonight. But again. I'm not all that discouraged. Uh, you know, like I said, tough game against a tough team in a tough environment. Not a lot of teams will probably come out with that game. You know, do I feel like we could have? Yeah, but we would have had to play a lot better. We just didn't yeah. tonight. That's fine. And uh, you know, something we talk about a lot on here is you can't let one loss turn into more than one loss. And that I think is the most important point uh, moving forward to this next game going up into Boston College uh, on the road this weekend. That's a game you feel like you gotta have, especially this late, this late in the season against a team like Boston College. You just gotta go up there and take care of business. So let me tell you another silver silver lining of this game because again, this final thought is not about this game. This is about this team. This team is undefeated after losses this season. Undefeated after losses this season. So they've done an amazing job of not letting one loss turn into, and even coming out of this game. We are a game and a half back of the uh, lead in the ACC. And of all the teams that are in front of us, we beat Miami already on this season. So we split that series. Um, we've beaten – no, no, Clemson is still ahead of us. I believe that they're – yeah, so Clemson is still ahead of us and Duke is still ahead of us. So we have the opportunity to gain some ground here. We have the opportunity to make some positive things happen. and and. I hate to be this guy, but I kind of got to say it. 19 and six is still technically the best record in the conference. I mean, the only team yeah, with a higher winning I mean, percentage than us is Miami, and they're 19 this, and five. This loss really doesn't affect a whole lot negatively. I mean, yeah, it's it's another L in the in the L column, but you know, you you look at the weekend the ACC just had this past weekend. Teams are still beating up on each other. So yeah. as long as we're winning the games against the teams like the Boston Colleges and the Georgia Techs, we're going to stay right there where we need to be. So Absolutely. the biggest thing moving forward is just keep your head down, keep plugging away. I mean, you, I saw uh, before our game tonight, Wake Forest put the smackdown on UNC. So they're yep. continuing to fall down. Wake Forest is, you know, they're mixing it up somewhere in the middle. We're going to have to see Wake Forest again, you know. There's bigger games still down the road. This loss doesn't really affect us a whole lot. I don't know if I subscribe to the theory of good losses, but if there was such a thing as a good loss, I think we had one tonight. Doesn't affect us negatively. Doesn't hurt our resume other than just another number in the, the L column. We're fine. There's no need to panic. You know, tough loss. We're moving on. Absolutely. And again, uh, we're not talking to the majority of Wolfpack Nation because the majority of Wolfpack Nation is rational enough to see a loss and say, hey, it happens, you know, we don't, you never want to lose. You want to win every game you're involved in. You want to win every contest, but it's, this loss is not going to be the end of the world as we know it. Uh, so we're not talking to you. We're not talking to y'all. The vast majority, 90% of Wolfpack Nation, go ahead, cover your ears, do a la, 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 because we're not talking to you right now. We're talking to the folks who every game that we lose is fire Keats. Relax. Yes, the problems of Coach Keats that everybody complains about, no pawns about, including myself. Again, I've been screaming for three, four years now. We need sets committed to memory. We need sets that we know will produce a bucket. I've been screaming that for years now. But even with that, it would be very unfair to only give him blame for losses, especially one like this, and say that the credit belongs to the, the, trans, the players who transferred in as if they transferred to NC State through osmosis. As if we just sat here, as if Kevin Keats sat there completely still with his hands in his lap, twiddling his thumbs, and they just ended up here. So, yeah, I mean, listen, Kevin Keats didn't shoot 33% tonight. Yeah. Kevin Keats didn't lose his, 
uh, assignment on defense. Kevin Keats didn't turn the ball over 15 times, okay? You can't put it on him. I know he becomes an easy target a lot of times, and we do lose games we're supposed to win, but you got to credit him for how much success we've had this season. Now, yeah, I don't I don't like losing. Nobody likes losing. But just because you have a tough loss on the road, that doesn't fall on him. It's just a tough night. We didn't execute well enough. We're on to the next one. Well, to, I, to quote, to quote Bill, Bill Belichick, we're on to Boston College. That's all there is to it. The, and, and I'm, I'm going to say that I, I do disagree with you. Now, I do think some of the blame falls on him. I just don't think that it's, oh, wait, this is Keats and, you know, we need to get rid of So we're, we're about to land this thing, but we'll be right back after a quick word from our sponsors. All righty. So going up to Chestnut Hill, tell me, what does this team need to do to come away with a win in the middle of this three-game stretch in which they're going all up and down the Eastern Seaboard? I think something important that NC State can do is go back and watch the tape from when Clemson went up there just a, just a couple weeks ago. Clemson went up there and took an L in a game that felt pretty embarrassing for them. We need to study exactly how Boston College took them off their game because Clemson has been playing a good style of basketball considering they're the top of the conference. You need to pick apart what went wrong there and implement how to avoid making those same mistakes this weekend. We need to play our style of basketball, you know, something that we did not do tonight because we played directly into the hands of UVA. You can't let Boston College take control of the game. We need to play to our pace. We need to play to our strengths and just make sure you're taking care of business. This is the same sort of game that we we're just worried about with the women's team when they went down and lost to Georgia Tech. This is a game that you cannot let slip away. It's a very winnable game in a very dire part of the season. You just have to go up there and take care of business. That's all there is to it. There are, there's, here's my thing for this game. The book is out now on DJ Burns, I believe. I believe the teams now are going to say, every time he touches the ball in the paint, double him. Every time, if he backs you down that three-point line, that's fine. As soon as he gets near that paint, double him. He's going to want to spin or drop step to his left. Double him. Double him, force him to go right. That's that's what it's going to be. So, Jarkel, I don't know what's going on with your shooting. Get it together big time. Terquavian, hey, we uh, we kind of need you. Kind of need you to show up. Casey Morsell, keep doing what you're doing. You're looking great out there. You're looking amazing. I mean, boy, you can't miss from deep. I love it. Um, but with that being said, we're going to need other folks to step up. Because the reality is this. DJ Burns was not allowed or was not, let me not say allowed. He was not put in a position to score the way he did simply because he's that amazing of a post scorer from the outset. No, 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 no. We started with our guards filling it up, and then teams had to pay extra attention to them. And so they said, well, who are you going to help off of, right? Let's look at the lineups that we got on the court. You got DJ on one side of the block, right? Normally going to be he's going to be on the right-hand uh, side of the block or right side of the block, receiving the ball in the post. And then you've got on the perimeter, you've got Gant on the other side of the post because he's, you know, that's generally where he needs to be at. That's generally where he plays, and he plays pretty well down there. And then you've got Casey Morsell shooting 44% from deep. You've got Terquavian Smith, the leading scorer in ACC. You've got Jarkel Joyner, a guy who has filled it up plenty of times for the pack in terms of, so where do you help? Where do you help? If you help, you, everybody knows the rule is you never help the next guy over if that guy is closest to the rim. So you can't come off Gantt. And then you say, well, you can't help from Tequavin because he's who he is. You can't help from Jarkel because he's who he is. You can't help from Casey. That's the the that's the that's secret sauce. We need to get back to hitting those shots if they're going to give you open shots, if they're going to help, and we're going to kick the ball around before teams can pre-rotate. We need to knock down those shots in order to make teams pay, and then that frees it back up for DJ to do what he does. Exactly. You know, it's – it's kind of amazing it took this long for teams to get aggressive on DJ like we saw tonight, but we got to learn from that too. You know, when DJ gets doubled like that, somebody cut. When somebody cuts, somebody else get open, uh, you know, around the perimeter because that's going to be open too. Like you just said, if they're going to crash in on DJ, we got a whole lot of other opportunities that are going to open up around them. 
And then when they try and overcompensate for that, that's when DJ can get cooking again. So you just got to make them make them miss, make them think too much about it. Because as soon exactly. as that happens, it'll open all up for us. Exactly. Be the better pugilist. It's punch, counter punch. You got to fill teams out. Teams are now going to throw the punch of doubling DJ. What's your counter punch, Coach Keys? What's your counter punch? What's your counter punch, Wolfpack basketball? Wolfpack Nation, thank you all so very much for coming out. We appreciate you every single time y'all make this show what it is. Peace and love, y'all, as always. Go Pack. Go Pack. You are locked on Wolfpack. Your daily podcast on the NC State Wolfpack. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Thank you.